may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. I don't know about you all, but I think I'm very excited that we're very close to getting home. I hope you all feeling the same way I do. Because each day the news just keeps pouring in and it's getting more grim for the world and better for us. We're very close. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I can't wait to get home. I don't know about you guys, but I've been thinking a lot about it a lot more the last couple of days, just with all this stuff happening. I know we're so close. I'm just, I hope you're all as excited as I am. I mean, literally, this is, this is an amazing time. We're seeing scripture come to life. The last year and a half has been amazing, like nothing I've ever seen. I never thought I'd ever be in the days where scripture just is coming right off the pages. You know, and the bad thing is most of the people don't even see it. Only we see it. I mean, it's just so many people are asleep. It's just, it is pretty scary that nobody knows scripture anymore. And that's why so many are asleep and don't see it because they don't know scripture. Only scripture they've ever gotten, most of them, is what they've been told. And that's what they believe. They never saw it with their own eyes. That's sad, but that's where we are. Now, this came in... It's a consumer thing about how Americans are feeling right now. I think most of the world, they don't know what's happening, but they feel the pinch. Just the, the price of meat and everything else. There was a major recall on a hamburger meat the other day from Walmart across the globe, across the whole United States. And a major recall because it had a salmonella, I do believe. So, I mean, literally. And we've had so many factories, food factories blow up and trains, uh, derailments, I mean, and the economy has just got worse and worse and worse, and it's gotten no better. Why migrants are coming across the border, and they're literally going to crash the Social Security system and the welfare system, the world is not going to be one, but they don't care, because they know it's collapsing. That's why God warned us about, with Sage, with that, uh, talking about Warren Buffett pulling out all his stock, because he knows what's coming. This goes with that. Consumers feel the economic shift. I think everybody does. Can you feel it too? Over the past few weeks, I have heard from so many readers deeply troubled about the economic conditions. Like I said, they don't have a clue what's really happening. Where they live, in some cases, sales are way down. In other cases, it seems almost impossible to find a decent job. Wait here in a couple, a little while. When the tribulation happens, there ain't going to be no jobs. It is almost as a tremendous chill descended upon the U.S. economy as the second quarter of 2024 began. Why? Because our country decided to go against Israel and control them and what they do. There's no more blessings coming to America. Those days are over, and you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes, the economic conditions have certainly not been good for a few years, but it appears that an absolutely enormous economic shift of historic proportions is now taking place right in front of our eyes. They say they still, they truly don't know what's happening. Other than early stages of the pandemic, we haven't seen anything like this since 2008 and 2009. It's going to get a lot worse than that. Let me give you an example that will illustrate what I'm talking about. A reader that lives near Seattle recently wrote me about the horrible downturn that she is witnessing in the tech industry. She said that I could share this information with all of y'all. I live in a tech corridor outside of Seattle and practically no one can find a job in tech. Apparently, the cost of uh, AI processors and servers are so expensive that large tech companies are laying off workers to accommodate for the increased infrastructure cost. Lucifer and his AI. 
I would estimate that 50% of the people I know in tech are under, unemployed, including myself and my spouse. In addition, there is laying off the, both the FTE and contractors and uh, not backfilling those positions. The problem is excavated if you're over 40 because they don't want to compensate, compensate for the experience. In fact, experience seems to be working against people, not to mention AI taking over the roles like technical writing and marketing communications. It's getting really bad out there, and large companies play along with the media. I've met with several ex-colleagues who have had their entire teams laid off, and former FTEs who have had to take major pay cuts as contractors. I've also heard of more round of layoffs coming. I went over to Microsoft the other morning to have a coffee with an ex-colleague, and, and it's a ghost town. No one is in conference rooms or offices. Maybe people are working from home, but it sure felt very different. The email resonated with me strongly because she's right. Vast hordes of tech workers have already been laid off and more hitting the bricks soon. But the tech industry is supposed to be one of the most economic bright spots. If things are that bad in the tech industry, what does it say about the economy as a whole? Warren Buffett just pulled out all his stock out of the railroads, and that is a huge stock. Railroads make a lot of money. What does he know that we don't? Over the past year or so, pretty much everyone who looked for a job has told me the same thing. The job market is brutal. They've applied for dozens, if not hundreds, of openings, and no one can get callbacks. No one's hiring, they tell me. Yes, I have heard the same thing over and over again, too, and it's getting worse with each passing day. And most Americans don't even have a clue that it's happening. That's how sad it is. On Wednesday, we learned about even more layoffs at Google. And see, the press, what's the press saying? What's Lucifer saying through the press? Plenty of jobs. The country is booming. All lies. And people go right for it. Google filed approximately 200 fired approximately 200 employees and re relocated some of their jobs overseas, the latest sign of a long-running effort by big tech firms to cut costs and restructure itself. The job cuts, an announced initially on the eve of Google's blowout first quarter earning reports, targeted members of Google's core team, which works on a technical foundation behind the company's flagship products as well as the online safety of users in its global IT infrastructure. At least 50 of the roles were based on Google's headquarters there in Sunny, uh, Sunnyvale, California, expected to be the replacement workers for the roles in Mexico and India. CNBC reported that citing a renewal of inner internal documents, large companies all over America are looking to trim the fat, and that often means giving the axe to expensive older workers. There is very little loyalty in the corporation world today. You have been given 20 years of your life to a company, but most of the moment you become expandable, they will dump you like a potato. Millions of small businesses are really struggling right now, too. During the month of April, 43% uh, April, of all small business renters in the United States were unable to pay their rent. The last time we witnessed anything like this was during the lockdowns and in, uh, during the early stages of the pandemic. A significant number of small businesses across the nation are struggling to pay rent due to skyrocketing costs. Go to the grocery store. You'll know what they're talking about. Uh, the company's latest small business report published on Friday found that 43% of all small business renters in the U.S. were unable to pay their rent in full and on time on the month of April. Such a high delinquency rate hasn't been reported in the U.S. since March of 2021, the height of the CV. The delinquency rate, and there's nothing now doing that. It's just on its own. Like I said, when you go against Israel, and our government has, the blessings quit. And that's what we've been telling everybody. It's like, oh, no, there's a great revival coming. No, right here's proof that that's not coming. The rapture's coming. The proof's in the pudding. The delinquency rate was also four percentage points higher in March, making it the largest month over month surge in over a year, according to data analyzed. If we don't have a disease to blame this time around, it's the downfall of America. America made its choice which way it was going to go, and it has. And now you're seeing what's happening. God's going to take everything away from them. We're leaving. It's not us. But he's taking everything away from them. They'll have nothing. Sadly, conditions are only giving uh, going to get tougher for small businesses. Well, there ain't going to be no small business or big businesses. 
Because after World War III, they're all gone. Sadly, but it's just the way it is. Once we leave, I promise you, before the rapture, that's the last bit of civilization will be known in America. That's it. Right now, as you're seeing the, the, the last days of that. Once we go, World War III happens, America never recovers. This stuff doesn't even put that into perspective. But the business, all that's gone. Small businesses, gone. People are just holding on to scraps at this point. Meanwhile, the total number of retail stores in the U.S. closed so far in 2024 is 2,600 companies. U.S. retail has confirmed another 169 closures last week, bringing the total to this year 2,600. That's store brands. That's like people that has hundreds and two hundreds of stores. That's that's a lot. U.S. retailers can see stores that announced the shutting locations, including Express, Out, uh, Out Fox, Hosp, uh, Hosp, Hosp, I don't know what that is. Uh, Shop and Shave, uh, uh, Urban Outfitters, and Walmart are shutting down lots of their stores. We're in the midst of another retail apocalypse. We ain't are we are not hearing more about this because they're not going to tell you. On top of everything else, Chicago PMI is dropping the fastest pace that's seen in the collapse of the Lehman Brothers in 2008. After miraculously surging in two years highs in November 23, Chicago PMI has plunged for five straight months, with the last four months seeing the MOM declines accelerating against expectations of a rise of 44.5. That's the worst five months collapse since Lehman. With everything that's going on, how in the world can anybody possibly claim that the economy is good? Lucifer's got them all believing, honey. They believe anything these people tell them. If it comes out of Fox, you'll miss NBC or CNN. People believe it's God, basically. And they believe anything they say. You've got your right that believes everything Fox says or uh, these other ones that are con say they're conservative and they don't tell the truth either. And then you got the ones on the left, same thing, CNN, MSNBC, and many more, all saying the same lines and the same lies each and every day. And everybody call, they tune in to listen to the lies and go about their merry little ways because God tells them the truth. They don't want it. They want everything to be good. That it's not. Economic activity is slowing down. Mass layoffs are happening all over the country. The cost of living is absolutely crushing the middle class. More people are falling out of the middle class every day. At this point, there are tens of millions of Americans that are either considered to be living in poverty. I'm one of them. Over time, higher costs and sluggish wage growth has left more Americans financially vulnerable, uh, with many known as the Alice. Nearly 40 million families, or 29% of the population, fall in the category of Alice. Asset limited income constraint. It's like all of us. We're just living from payday to payday. According to the United States, uh, the United Ways United for Alice program, the first canned coined the term to refer as households earning above poverty line, but less than what's needed to get by. That figure includes about 37.9 million Americans who live in poverty. That's a lot, a lot of people. Uh, comprising 11.5% of the total population, according to the data. Collectively, the two categories discussed above uh, now comprise more than 40% of the total population. And if you think things are bad now, oh God, he doesn't, he, he doesn't even have a clue how bad it's going to get. Just wait until you start seeing the suffering that will happen during the tremendous chaos that is dead ahead of us. It and took, it took decades of foolish decisions to get us here and then a historic tipping point. Our economy is literally breaking down right in front of our eyes. Well, we're shipping every minute of our money to Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, literally, we've been doing that, what? We sent them 250, 250 billion here, 450 billion there. We did that all summer and nobody said nothing. Why Americans couldn't afford groceries. Nobody said a word. Not a word. The historic tipping point, our economy is literally breaking down in front of our eyes. So that gives you a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to keep you late because I know it's a Saturday night and uh, I don't want to add more to that. I just thought that was a great article that we wanted to go over with the economy. Because remember, God said the economy is going to run us to World War III. That's what's called it. He tells me a message two days beforehand that I get knowing that, and it leads me to Warren Buffett pulling all his funding out of the railroad. 
So he's given me the alarm bells, and May the 8th is right around the bend. He said the economy will lead to World War III. Well, that's, that is in junction with what you just read. Now, they don't know what's coming. God has shown us since 2007 this great war between NATO and Russia, and there's not much left. Europe and Russia and most of the states in the United States are badly damaged from this war, and they don't put boots on the ground. Okay, this is not World War One or World War Two, because a lot of people believe that this this cannot happen. It will not happen. All they want to do is they're all working together. It's one big conspiracy. No, God's already showed us it's no conspiracy. This will happen. Satan will put this into play. He will convince them to go to war with each other, and they've already convinced themselves they got to. Okay, God's already told us. They have already made up their mind. This is going to happen. We get pulled. Before, so don't fear it. Now, if you're lost, you better fear it because <laughs> literally you don't want to be left here. That's why we tell you trust the gospel. First Corinthians 15 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Call upon the blood of Jesus right now, people. Listen, he died for me and you. I don't care what you've done. All you gotta say is, Jesus, come to me. I've heard. I, I see the signs. I want to go home with you. I don't want to be left here. He'll come. And all you got to do is just believe what he did on that cross, that he died for me and you. Shed his blood for that. Okay? And then you're sealed until we get out of here. And that's not very far off. All the signs are there. Everything God's told us to watch for is all happening. You know, that's, that's all I'm doing from this point on. I'm just here to remind people, and hopefully we have a couple of stragglers that's never heard this, and they wake up in time. That, that's the only reason I'm doing this now, okay? We're doing this all the way to the time of the rapture. But that's why that's what I'm here to do. I'm just here to remind people, Jesus is coming. You have no fear. He's got our backs. He's talking to us. He's there with us the whole time. And I'm here to tell you, get excited because we're going home. And you're about to see your families, your animals, and it's about to be the greatest experience ever. So get excited. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you at home. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube. Letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep. Those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.